You're listening to The Deranged Nation, a true crime podcast featuring New York Times bestselling paranormal romance author and your host, Teresa Gableman. Hey guys, welcome to Deranged Nation and our fourth episode. Hi, it's hey, Elena. Our episode tonight is going to be The Vampire Murders. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Something you know a little bit about, huh? I do. I do know a little bit. Well, even though a I, lot of it, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've done I've done research because of my writing, but you know, I was really surprised at how much, um, you know, the vampire. <laughs> <laughs> what are you like? <laughs> Dad would be an easy victim for a vampire. He'd probably just pass out as soon as, it, <laughs> as soon as he sees her teeth. He'd be like, Bleh. passing out. Hey, no, I'm just kidding. As long as there's no blood, I'm cool. Well, there <laughs> yeah, there's probably going to be blood. All right, sorry. <laughs> oh my god. Um, now I lost my train of thought because now I'm thinking about dad passing out. All right, so vampires. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we're we're talking about vampires, which is. You know, fiction-wise, is something I know about, but I was really surprised that, you know, the the vampire culture is really going on out there. And through the research, you know, there's clubs and it's a whole culture. So it's it's actually pretty interesting. You know, some most of the vampire cultures that I've you know read about that's going on out there today, they're you know not into what we're going to cover through the vampire murder um they're more of fictional like a role cosplay yeah, just, yeah, like, like role playing and stuff like that so super fans pretty much yeah yeah so uh but they do live a lifestyle um there are some that you know that do blood consumption um but the majority of them that i've read about they don't right. they don't do that and they're just people that have a common interest in. interest in something and it's a it's a lifestyle that they agree with and hey to each his own you know right if that's what they want to do and they're not hurting anybody i don't see nothing wrong with it but this is kind of weird because i was like how you know how many crimes have been committed you know and being dubbed as like a vampire murder? yeah and there's quite a few. Actually, I found eight um, real real life vampire crimes, and they're pretty pretty crazy. So the first one is Countess Elizabeth Bathory. I think that's how you say her name. And this was 1609. Ooh, she was an early adopter of the vampire <laughs> defense, a member of the Hungarian royal family whose cruelty toward her female servants was said to have colluded drench, drenching them in water and leaving them to freeze to death outside in the winter. So that's pretty crazy. Um, following the murder of a young noble woman, which the, was count, by her. which the countess staged to look like a suicide, she was made, you know, eventually made accountable for the crime. What, while it's difficult to separate fact from fiction in this case, legend surrounding suggests that she killed more than 650 women and bathed in their blood. And I've Ooh. actually seen, it, there's like a movie or something that was based off of this lady. I think I, I know yeah. kind of what you're talking about. And it kept her young, right? And youthful, something like that? Yeah. Just like a vampire sucking someone's blood keeps them youthful. Right. And living forever. So that was kind of interesting. And then there's another one, Fritz Horman. He was known as the Vampire of Hanover. Um, he was one of the world's first ser- serial killers and one of the most prolific. Between 1918 and 24, he murdered at least two dozen people. Many of them he killed by biting through their necks. So, yeah, that's another <laughs> one. Jesus. 
Um, he was actually beheaded April 15th, 1925. Where are they at? Is, like, is this different countries? <laughs> it, it, um, Wait, man, it's just saying he's a vampire, so we better just, we better just cut that head off, make sure. <laughs> yeah. well, we're not, not playing no games with this motherfucker. <laughs> so they said the scientists... Chop it off. They did. They cut the head off so the scientists could study his brain. His, br- his head was preserved in a jar. And that was yeah. in German. That's why I'm watching that. German. <laughs> yeah, that was in German. That makes Making sure his eyes don't jar. open. And then there's an, the third oh, is Richard Chase. He had a lifelong fascination with blood, and which led to a horrific month-long murder spree that turned Richard Chase into the vampire Sacramento. This was between 1977 and 78. He murdered, disemboweled, and drank the blood of six people, ranging, and this is sad and disgusting, ranging in the age from 22 months to 36 years. Oh my god. He chose his victims at random, but only entered those homes where the door was open. If the door was locked, that meant you weren't welcome. So, the old saying is, with vampires, they had to be welcomed Welcome in. into the home. Right. Um, leaving your door unlocked and he actually that stated that in welcome. court eh, we have a different opinion on that <laughs> Mr. Chase <laughs> um, he was sentenced to death after being found guilty on all six counts of first degree murder but took his own life with an overdose of stockpiled antidepressants in the December of 90, or 1979 here's some sick mofos <laughs> um, another one is James I, do you guys find this interesting? Yeah, yeah I did. Yeah. I yeah. thought it was. I wouldn't have thought there'd been that many. No. James, I th- believe it's pronounced Riva. Does that look like Riva? I believe it yes. is. Yeah. yeah. Um, he was just 23 years old when he killed his wheel bound, <laughs> wheelchair bound grandmother. That's not funny. Oh, I don't know, why. Like, oh, I don't know oh. why I'm laughing, but I'm just like, dude, come on. What is wrong with you? Um, in Marshfield, Massachusetts in 1980, he stabbed her repeatedly and then shot her four times through the heart with bullets he had painted gold. In order to cover up the crime, he then burned down her house. When questioned, James claimed that he was a 700-year-old vampire who killed his grandmother in order to drink her blood. He later changed his story, saying that he had acted in self-defense. (laughs) <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> Acid uh, or no? Wow. She must have been a mean grandma. He Shit. believed that his grandmother... He be- Okay, so he's doing the old switcheroo. He believed his grandmother was a vampire and that she was using an ice pick to drain his blood at night. What? Yeah. <laughs> God. Um, in 81, <laughs> he was sentenced to life in prison for second degree murder and arson. <laughs> um... Oh my gosh, I don't even know how to say this name. So, he wants to try it. Chaos. Dominus. Demedius. Demedius. Okay. Chaos Demedius Viovis. Oh, that sounds perfect. So, if you are wondering what real-life vampires think of Twilight, <laughs> this guy has a very firm opinion Pop culture inspires me to vomit hot blood. Oh, so that's what this guy thinks of Twilight. Um, so he was set to stay in trial in early 2014 for the abduction adu- and murder of three men in Massachusetts and was convicted of aggravated assault charges in Maine over the ritualistic drinking of a teenager's teenage girl's blood years before. He forked his tongue, sharpened his teeth, implanted horns, and the number 666 tattooed across his forehead. Yeah. Like yeah, he sounds like a winner. Um, I like to wonder if he's on Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> left. Left. Huh? Uh, is that right? Swipe left? Something like that. Yeah. I've honestly never been I, on there. Me either. Me either. Well, that's well, a good I, thing. Yeah, I hope not. I hope nobody hears <laughs> that on it. Recently, anyways. <laughs> and as he said, uh, he says, wait a minute. Oh, for the Twilight, I guess this is what he's talking about. I've never seen this silly movie, he continued, nor have I read the books, nor would I ever, even now, waste my time with such useless drivel. 
Yeah, okay, well, we're going to take your opinion. I want to see a picture of that guy. Yeah, look at a picture. Uh, and let me know where you find it so I can put it up on the Facebook page. Alan Menez was obsessed with the 2002 vampire film Queen of the Damned. And that you know, I have never seen that. Really? It's, I have never it's, seen that. I know my I grandma to. used to watch it all the time. She was big into sci-fi. It's, yes, but it was, it was pretty good, though. It's a long movie. <laughs> Yeah, I've never seen it. I, I can't even it. really remember much of it, but I know that I know that I think she may be bathed in blood, actually, in the movie. Your well, grandma did? No. Oh. <laughs> the Queen of the Damned. The Queen of the Damned. Uh, what? Sorry. She wore that. She yeah. Was, she wore a crown. I know that. I can't. I was so I young. I'm it's have probably to watch been it. over 15 years since I've seen it. Well, he he borrowed it. He borrowed the movie from his breast. Breast. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta leave that in from his best friend <sighs> he watched it up to three times a day and he began to believe the main character uh, was real and wanted to him to kill someone so that he too could become a vampire i knew i had to murder someone he said at his trial he decided oh dude um, he decided on the guy that gave him the movie. So he killed Thomas that let him borrow the movie. What? Yeah. He stabbed him 42 times, hit him with a hammer, drank his blood, and consumed part of his brain. That's disgusting. See, sometimes I just feel like it's got to be mental disorder. Oh, God. And, and that's... Drugs. Hello. Or, yeah. Oh, that or, guy. Your brain's <laughs> fried. He definitely looks like his name, don't he? <gasps> Oh, okay, guys. I will be definitely be posting that <laughs> lovely character. Those type of people right there get them surgeries where Ew. they implant stuff into their faces. Why? And I've seen <laughs> people do clothespins through their skin and wear it like a fashion. Oh, who is that? It's, 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 I don't know. Okay, we got to because they no, but these guys can't see what we're looking at, and you may not want to. What a tool! Ew. All I right. Look, oh, Dandy's got some but... pop rivets in his forehead. Look at that. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. So the next one. Okay. And just this... rivet and a couple horns on my head. <laughs> so this guy <laughs> ended up dying in prison from apparent suicide just over a year after being sentenced to life. The next one is Josephine Smith, a shuttered Hooters restaurant. That don't make sense. A Hooters restaurant may not be the first place you think of a vampire lar lair. <laughs> lar. Oh, God. I cannot talk. It's all right. But it's where the 22-year-old Josephine Smith attacked a 69-year-old homeless man in 2001 or 2011 as he slept in St. Petersburg, Florida. Smith allegedly told the man that I am a vampire and I'm going to eat you. <laughs> Before she <laughs> Oh my god. Before she bit off pieces of his face, lips and arm. The victim managed to escape and call police, who found Smith covered in blood at the crime scene with no recollection. Recollection. Thank you of the incident. There's some messed up people. These guys, these guys like going after people when they're sleeping. So the I know, I know, like, like they're welcome like, even though I'm sleeping. Come on. So <laughs> the number eight person oh. is the person that we're going to go over. Rod Farrell. And I remember this case because um, I was doing screen printing in our garage and Ron set up a little black and white TV for me so I could watch um, court TV. I was at direct TV. Um, court TV. <laughs> and uh, I remembered this case and I, I, I found it really interesting and I kind of wanted to re revisit it and see what you guys thought about it. Absolutely. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So Rod Farrell was a um, a kid from a broken home. He was raised by his mom, who, I mean, we'll get into her a little bit later, but she was kind of weird. But they lived in Murray, Kentucky, which is a very, very small, close-knit town. Um, pretty much everybody knew everybody. And he, everybody hung out at the skating rink. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what was that? Uh, um... Damn, what was the name of it? Okay. Circus. Was circus. Circus. It was circus. circus. It was, it was like huge. the biggest. It was the biggest in the United States or the world. It said on the sign, something yeah. like that. 
But Rod and his mom were kind of known by the police and the townspeople. Um, yeah. there's, there's not really a lot to watch on this one. No, there's, I found a lot there, on the internet. Yeah, yeah. a lot yeah. of reading for this one. There's not a whole lot yeah. of coverage on it like some of the other ones we've done. Mm-hmm. But at the age of 15, his mom introduced him into a role-playing game called Vampire the Masquerade. Um, so he was 15 at that time, and he created for himself and became obsessed and saying that he was a five-year-old vampire named Vesgo. Mm. So, yeah, that's kind of weird. But because of yeah, the game, I, though. I, I didn't know nothing about his mom from what we watched. It, I they, mean, I did some a little bit of reading on her. She's not really right. I know that. I mean, they didn't have much. Well, once we get into it a little bit more, you'll hear a little bit more about his mom. And But she, she was... Yeah. <laughs> fucked. Yeah. yeah. There you That's go. That's the politest way to say it. You were fucked. So, you know, a lot of these kids that, you know, weren't in, didn't have money, weren't in with the pop, you know, the popular crowd. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they kind of veered toward each other. Mm-hmm. And he met up, I believe he was a junior in high school when he met up with a uh, Jaden Murphy and they begin to uh, play role, you know, role playing games, Dungeon and Dragons, which I don't know anything about. I've I know it was popular when I was in school. I think it's still very popular. Yeah, yeah. I think it's yeah. huge. Yeah, I think it's huge. Um, but then Jaden took into um, being interested into the vampire culture, right? So that really kind of, you know, Rod really wanted to learn more about that yeah and so Jaden actually crossed him over and the way that somebody crosses over through the vampire culture right they cut themselves oh he would Jaden was his sire is what what they say right so they would cut themselves and take each other's blood um didn't they do that under a certain tree or something? They did it yeah. in a yeah. They did it, it on was, in yeah. a cemetery. Yep, there was a cemetery. There yeah. was a tree or something in the cemetery that they had to do it under for ritual beliefs or something like that. Right. They and from what I understood with this clan that they had together, mm-hmm. you know, they did a lot of role playing. Um, it even showed a little bit of that in the documentary yeah. that we watched. Yeah. So and sex. Sex. Yeah. yeah, sex is a big... Orgies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You blow me, I blow you, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hello. Huh? Um, and so... <laughs> Yuck. He, he was in with... <laughs> he was in with Jaden for a while until... In... in Jaden wasn't really into he just liked that lifestyle. Right. He wasn't into, you know, the killing and anything like that. Right. You know, he I'm, was pretty laid back. I will say they Sacrifices really they really much. kept to themselves too. Like the town blamed a lot of stuff on them, but mm-hmm. I mean from what I seen just from the few clips that there were, that they kind of kept to them themselves. Yeah. Yeah, they did. Well, and a lot of people, you know, and I know one of the uh, sheriffs of the town would say that there was a certain corner that he would see them always yeah. hanging out at and and stuff like that. But I know that they said uh, one of the girls that was in their group, I think it was actually, who said this. They no, it was one of the guys. They would walk down the road and like discuss their problems with each other, mm-hmm. and you know, kind of more or less peaceful until Rod came around. Right. Right. Well, what what happened was because of all the problems that I guess his mom was getting into. Um, now I don't know personally, right. but from what I've read on the internet, she was into prostitution, um, you know, stripping and stuff like that. Which, you know, honestly, I don't judge. It's right. whatever, whatever you need to do. But you know, she also was writing letters to these boys that was 
you know, part of this vampire thing that wasn't really appropriate for a mother to be writing them yeah. sexual fantasies and stuff like that. Involving candle wax. And yeah, it was just, it's just really weird. So she ended up taking Rod and they moved to Florida for a very short period. And this is where he met Heather Win- Windorf. Yeah. And I guess they dated girlfriend, boyfriend for a while. Something happened. They ended up back in Murray, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And he went back, you know, with Jaden and all this stuff. And supposedly, Jaden, you know, just noticed a big change in in Ron. He was just real, um, you know, angry, like, short with everybody yeah they were walking and he picked up a, a just a stray i think it was a kitten was it yeah, a kitten it was and was petting it and then the kitten scratched him and he threw it up against a tree and killed it broke its spinal cord i believe they said yeah too. and that's when Jaden was like yeah not happening this is it over so they split ways yeah because Jaden wasn't into that kind of stuff right um so Rod ended up getting um, Char- Charity, Casey, Scott Anderson, and Dana Cooper, and kind of formed his own little clan right. away from Jaden and and them. Um, so you know he felt that I, I guess he was still talking to Heather mm-hmm. in in Florida. They remained friends from what I've learned anyways. Yeah, yeah. and supposedly, I mean, they talked a lot because they were talking about, you know, high telephone bills and everything like that. (laughs) But um, Probably from each other. Right. So, um, she, from his account, was telling him, you know, she was mistreated by her parents. Um, Even sexual abuse was brought up. Which she oh, has I didn't denied. Know any of that. Yeah, which she she has denied. Um, and so apparently he was pretty much like, Well, do you want me to come and right. take you know, get you and bring you back here, which was the plan. Right. And that, you know, obviously didn't happen. So, um, as time went on, things in in town were kind of, uh, you know, getting weird. There was actually a shelter, and this is is really hard for for any of us to talk about because we're all animal lovers. Yeah. Yeah. But there was a shelter, and one, I believe, was it the owner? I believe it was the owner. Yeah, the owner. She Mm -hmm. came and seen... um, you know the dogs were out and she said i knew something was wrong she thought somebody had let him out yeah she tried to free him yeah yeah so she goes in gets some gets everything taken care of does kind of a walk around and sees a slit in the in the chain link fence yeah she said it was pulled back 20 feet like like somebody yeah, had rolled it and she yeah. was like there had, it had to be multiple people who did it mm-hmm. uh, and then i guess she walked out into the field right and well, the she, farther, yeah, she, yeah she noticed something out in the field yeah. and went out there and yeah there was uh puppies that had been taken out and you know mutilated mutilated um some of them it looked like they've been stepped on and pushed into the ground were some still alive some were well they were alive barely and their legs were cut off yeah cut off all their legs (sighs) yeah so i couldn't watch it honestly i literally was like okay tell me when it's over i can't watch that that's so sick i know the fact that they even showed it yeah so that's a sorry i should have said trigger warning before so animal lovers apologize but yeah that's a hard one we all feel the same way yeah Yeah. exactly (laughs) but all eyes and fingers pointed toward toward rod and his crew um and Jaden also i've said i believe said that he Believe highly it. suspects that Rod and them were a part of that. Yeah, because uh, he said that they talked about, like, let's say somebody kills someone in your family, what would you do? Like, that's the conversation that Jaden said that he had with Rod, and Rod said that he would never use a gun. He would literally want to get up close and personal with them and beat him to death or strangle him or stab him to death. He said that Rod said all those things. Yeah. <laughs> so... 
as time went on, you know, and more the more he obviously talked to Heather, he just had this, and even Jaden had mentioned, you know, Rod had this kind of presence of being the, I don't know if I want to even say knight in shining armor because, but, you know, he kind of had that feeling toward Heather, yeah. obviously. So, um, they actually go and to Florida and the plan was to just pick her up and bring her back to Murray. Right. Um, well, I thought they were running away to Louisiana or something. That is. I've been in the documentary. They were saying their plan. The one kid uh, said their plan wasn't. It's probably all lies. Like they probably like lied yeah. to. He probably lied to them and then lied to her. You know what I mean? Because he mm-hmm. dropped a bunch of acid on his way down. Like ten strips of it. <laughs> yeah. He probably yeah. didn't know what the fuck he was talking Damn. about. Ten yeah. strips of acid. Yes, and I forget what the name of it was, mm. but he like golden tiger, or golden something. something. Yeah. I remember some brown bear. <laughs> <laughs> Once. Yeah, that's what went around when we were ten- yeah. teenagers. <laughs> so Rod, Rod said he felt empathy for Heather um, because of the claims that she had made about her family. And, you know, he said he believed her. And um, she allegedly asked him to do something for her. And, um, you know, Rod was asked during the in- interrogation, you know, did she ask you to kill her parents? And he said, you know, she said something about that, but I figured it was like a joke. So, right. oh, yeah, sure, right. Um, so his plan was actually to go pick her up and return home to Kentucky. And so, you know, a chain, their car started to break down um, once they arrived in Florida. So they decided that they were going to take, you know, if Heather's fan, if they could get her parents' car, they would get their car and just take off with the, her right. car, her parents' car. Um, so there was Scott Anderson and there was um, Dana Cooper, I believe was her last name. Yes, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And Charity Casey and Rod Farrell. Yep. They all show up in Florida. Heather comes out of the house, and the girls stay. She, Rod said, what do you need from right. inside the house? I'll go get the keys. I'll go get what you need. You don't need to go back in there. And so the girls stayed out in the in the car. I think it was a station wagon or something. SUV, wasn't it? Was it an SUV? I think yeah, so. I believe this was later, not late in the evening, but in the evening time too, wasn't it? I think so, yeah. yeah. Yep. And so him and Scott Anderson go inside, and he said when he went through the garage, he felt that he needed something, you know, for protection just in case something. Right. You know, so he picked up a crowbar. Um, he go, they go inside and, um, her dad, I think was the first one he saw. Well, first they walked around the entire house to scope it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The two of them. Uh, looking in the window. Yeah. Just to see where everyone was. was. Yeah. And they found that, uh, her mother was in the shower and the father was laying on the couch. Asleep. Asleep. Right. So, you know, he... And it's kind of funny because he did say that at first they had sticks, but he did. He's like, I don't, I don't know how big her father is or anything right. like that. So they started looking around the the garage, and he was, you know, saw a chainsaw, and in his mind, he's like, I'll oh, know that's too loud, or you know what I mean. <laughs> right. Just, just, you know, some of the things that he said that I read, it's like, man, dude, you were like really yeah. messed up. Yeah. Um. And he said, I, that's when I found the crowbar. That was something I knew I could swat somebody away with and run if I had to. So this is what he's telling the investigators. Right. You know, as he's being investigated. Right. Um, and actually, they got in because she she unlocked the door for them to get in. So she left the door unlocked. Right. And it was about 9 p.m. Right. 9 p.m. that night. And um, so... They went in and they seen her, um, Heather's father, Richard, sleeping on the couch. So they went to the back bedrooms, but they can't find the parents' bedroom where 
they could find, you know, where Heather said the keys for the, the Explorer right. was. And he said, and that's pretty much when everything went south. Um, he said, I just snapped and lost control of myself, you know, um, which sure, with acid like, in your system. Yeah. I'm like, whatever. Uh, so he said he went over and just started to smack her dad with a crowbar continuously. Yeah, and he said something about uh, he was afraid that if he got up, he was going to get him, so he just did it until he died. Yeah. Well, and the police later determined that it was more than 20 times yeah. that he hit, you know, Richard Windorf. Um his face was unrecognizable and he had a gaping hole in his head and he kind of like was like yeah you guys didn't see the hole yeah and and, and <laughs> the scott anderson is just standing there like in shock like what yeah. the shit just happened yeah you know he had no idea um so he he was I, I, this is so weird he said i was more intoxicated because of the blood and he said, I started dancing around, and the slaughter wasn't even finished yet. Oh, my God. So her mother, Naomi, appears in front of him and sees what happens. She's wear she was wearing a bathrobe and had a cup of coffee in her hand. She tried She threw the coffee at Rod, which pissed him off. And well, what the fuck she, do you expect, dude? And Rod said she was, you know, asking him, who are you? Uh, who are you? And he, he said, I told her to run. I told her to run. And what? he said it, he said he thought he did. Right. I'm like, yeah, right. You didn't. Um, she charged at him, flung the coffee in his face. And he said, the next thing I knew is I was taking her to the ground, beating her to death. Sick. It is. It's just i don't know man like you expect someone not to defend themselves in their home and if anything though that's what like tell her to run are you joking didn't he say he took the crowbar and like ran it through the body and yeah. the heart yeah yeah just to make or, sure she was dead yeah. yeah 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 so he uh <laughs> in his exact words after that i got back to business to finding the master bedroom you know, I'm just like back to business. So calm yeah, about it. it. Whatever. <clears throat> All right, got, what? finally got rid of the yeah, problem. Yeah, his, his interrogation, the way he was explaining it was like, was like a too calm, like an athlete explaining their fucking best game or something. I know. Like, it was <laughs> That's fucked a great up. Way to explain <laughs> like it was. Like yeah. it was like highlighting. There was it, no like, remorse either. No. Yeah, I mean, and they, this dude's just, trying to get out still. Yeah, he just didn't care. So he said after that he got back to business and grabbed a pearl necklace off the stand that belonged to her mother, a hunting knife from the drawer that belonged to her father, and the keys were in the dish on the, uh, the, what the hell is it called? The sink? The, no, the... This... The end table? Yes. Okay. Thank you. The end table. And then he said he grabbed Scott and ran out the door. So they got into the floor to explore and collected the vampire brides that's just oh my so, God. yeah give me a break now as <laughs> as, just, as they just, the whole thing though i just want to say like the whole thing with them claiming as vampires it's like dude it's not like vampires do it clean you know what i mean just yeah. two holes in the <laughs> neck man you know what i mean like suck a little blood yeah get in get out get in. yeah what the fuck dude like, like this DNA. dude ain't a, like he's claiming to be a vampire but you're fake man you ain't no vampire you're just fucking whack exactly <laughs> Sick fuck. So, as they're making their... They pick up the girls, their vampire brides, whatever the hell they are, and they take off with Heather. Heather's with them now. And her Heather's big sister, Jennifer, comes home and finds her parents slaughtered. Yeah. So she calls the police. Oh, so, man, I can't imagine. Yeah, this one, this one rubbed me, and this one got me pretty good. Well, the father bit. never even knew. I mean, he was asleep. So yeah. didn't have a chance. I'm sure the first or second yeah. hit to the head oh, with yeah. that crowbar. It was probably done. stunned he him probably the never first even time. Full fledged force, you right. know, something like that. Yeah. So 
they decide instead of going, you know, right straight up to Kentucky, figuring, you know, afraid that they would head to um, New Orleans and Mardi Gras. So they go that way. I read an account, and I couldn't find it anywhere else, but I read an account that um, they were pulled over like four times by the police. Five times. Five times. You've seen and that too? And let go? And let go. What? Yeah. Yeah. Did he yeah. not have like blood all over him? Yeah. Or did he change his clothes? He must have changed his clothes because... Did they ever find the clothes or the... His clothes. I mean, I mean, he sure. he literally admitted to it. Like it wasn't hard to convict him. He right. They probably didn't even. Like I said, he literally gave a rundown. Like fucking. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like what they uh, they dumped the murder weapon and other evidence in the Mississippi River. It, okay, and he took off his bloody clothes at a gas station. So he knew. You yeah. know, he they, they yeah, were yeah, trying to I avoid mean, a manhunt. You know, they oh, knew yeah. shit was going to hit the fan. Um, at all this right Did now. Did the daughter stay with him the whole time? Was she arrested when they all? Yeah, but she didn't know because, and this is where it gets kind of funky. She not I know. know. Like, I that's know. what How I'm she not... covered in blood. I know. Yeah, and, not... but and I feel like he'd be bragging about it. But I've read two accounts. I read one that he goes into the back of the Explorer and hides while Scott's driving and picks the girls up. But they were left in the car no, the whole time, they, I thought. In no, the they station got, wagon. Yeah, and so the SUV. They, and then so they, they get switched out and the get plates. The they switched the plates, yeah. too, and they got pulled over five times, and nobody <coughs> no. yeah. nobody caught that and either. They were not arrested. Nope. They were expecting a... <laughs> Come this on, is, guys. This is what it is. Come on, now. They were expecting a teenage cult leading psychopath, and instead, Rod was speaking to them with ever courtesy quiet and he already had a story set up so he said uh they never caught on and you'll freak out how they actually caught them which i thought was pretty funny um (laughs) so in baton rouge is where their luck runs out rods well there's different accounts of this too because supposedly Heather and Rod were exes. Then they switched, said, no, I'm, we're We've dating. We've always been friends. Then they're saying Rod's and Charity were boyfriend, girlfriend. So it was just well, going back and forth. Well, they were all in sexual I acts know. together anyway. That's so. what I figured. But Charity calls her family. So Charity calls the, her family who inform the police who then turn and trace the number to the motel where all five fugitives are arrested just three days after the murders. So for her calling home, you know, that's yeah. that's, that's how, how they, they get them. busted. Yeah. Um, of all of all things to do. And this is what <laughs> this is another thing too. Because and it even showed on there during you know, and they Rod didn't seem to give a crap about anything no he like stuck his tongue out at the cameras and, uh, and then they were made they put them together in an interrogation room and they're in there making out you're joking no him and heather no uh charity yeah <coughs> so yeah <laughs> i'm sorry he ends up actually confessing to murdering um richard and naomi on his own performing like a circus act and hope it would help his four followers go free so he he took everything you know he he said i did it all just to keep everyone else out well that's so did the scott guy get out because at first i thought he got life in prison he did yeah so he still they all got got, they all they all got there was a 10 year sentence for one of the girls a 17 year sentence for the other girl Mm -hmm. i can't remember which one in the and then life and then death and the heather the daughter of the two she didn't she didn't get nothing. No, no she, she was acquitted. She, I'm, yeah. she probably I played know. victim. Like, oh, yeah, I but was dude, scared. how could you live for your, live with yourself, so the, man? I mean, yeah. So I know. Um, see, it, Scott actually admits his role in the killing, but he actually did not kill anyone. Right. Um, 
And I was going to go for the father. And this is what Scott says. I was going to go for the father and he was going to go for the mother. But when I saw him make the first blow, I just couldn't do it. He said, I, I couldn't do it. So that says right there that they had planned yeah, right. on killing them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's another mixed thing that, you know, <clears throat> you're reading some. Well, his attorney probably told him. Oh, that. right. Or exactly. Because yeah. <laughs> premeditated is, <laughs> is a lot worse when oh, you plan it. Yeah. So they, and, and Heather actually was crossed over into the clan. So she, mm. yeah, she was in the clan. Um, and the, the police were trying to find out if Heather knew that he was going to murder her parents. And she, she says, I remember telling him flat out, don't even go near my parents. Heather tells police on the on camera because he asked me not too long ago if I wanted my parents dead or alive. And I told him straight out, I want them alive. So... I'm sorry. If you care and love for your parents, you would have never let them go in there. Exactly. Why wouldn't she have grabbed the keys herself? I know she's young. I get it, but still, you know what I mean. Why? Why? Why not? You know, hey, you're you're running away from home. You know where your dad's asleep. Your mom's in the shower. Grab your shit. Pull the car down the end of the driveway and get the hell out of there. If you're gonna run away, right. Dana uh, Cooper. I told you that she's lying, though, I think. Oh, yeah, Well, Dana Cooper says that Heather didn't even know that Rod had murdered her parents until they were on their way to New Orleans. Um, Charity told her right as we were getting ready to leave Florida while we were basically leaving the county, um, she started freaking out really bad. So that was um, Dana's story about Heather. Right. Um, then the police keep, keep on Heather. Um and she just said, he kept telling me I didn't have a choice to go or stay. So she's pretty much saying that she was kidnapped. You know, right. you're, you're going no matter Plain what. Plain scared. Right. Yeah. Heather denies being, um, denies hating or being mistreated by her parents and is ultimately exonerated by a grand jury, which finds she was not aware of the plan to murder her mom and dad. She was never charged. So she walked free. So on February 12th, 98, then 17-year-old Rod Farrell pleaded guilty to the murders, claiming that the others traveling with him were innocent except for Scott Anderson, who was simply an accessory. Is that right? Accessory. Accessory. Did I say accessory? Accessory. accessory. It's been a long <laughs> day, folks. Um, Farrell pleaded guilty to two counts of felony murder, and his attorneys tried to argue that he was insane, you think? <laughs> um, he had been diagnosed with mental disorders, including, oh, Lord, personality disorders, Asperger's syndrome, and schizophrenia. They said his mom's upbringing had a lot to do with why he thought everything he was doing was okay, too. Right. That was their defense, anyways. Hmm, th- yeah, and this is new, too. Hmm. University of Florida further, further attested to the fact that Rod could sometimes witness spiritual things like angels and demons so how in the what place the university University of florida Florida. how could they attest to something like that (laughs) that's odd that there's that word again odd odd i that's the first time i think that's the first time i've said that since the first episode where i've said it yeah a thousand times (laughs) um so do do, do, charity Kisi, I hope I'm saying her name right, was convicted of two counts of third degree murder, robbery with a gun or deadly weapon, and burglary ar- armed with weapons or explosives. When? But she, uh, um, <coughs> doesn't say. Probably around the same time. Right. She didn't even go in the house. No, that doesn't no. make sense. No. Huh. But she was sentenced to ten and a half years in the state prison. Dana Cooper was convicted of those charges as well, but was given a seventeen and a half year sentence. Anderson was convicted of the same charges as Farrell and was sentenced to life in prison. For two years, Farrell held the record as the youngest inmate on death row until November two thousand, when the Florida Supreme Court reduced his sentence to life in prison. Because Florida had long abolished parole, the sentence is without it. 
Casey was released from prison in March 2006, and Cooper was released in pr- from prison in 2011. Um, mm. Yeah. That's cr- I, I'm going to look into that a little bit further because, wow. About her, they didn't, yeah. But, yeah, both of the girls, because they never even went inside the house, so wouldn't they be... Just, ex- I mean, I would think just accessory because they, I mean, they didn't know either, though, right? Yeah, they they know had to have happen, known. They, they, know. they had to have they known. Knew. The way Rod was, he would, he was probably bragging about it. Yeah. I bet. I think the daughter knew. They probably all knew as they were going down to Florida. They probably knew. Yeah. We talked about it. I'm sure. And then oh, Rod sure. actually came they were, through and I did. Mean, and then they were they like, they probably didn't think he was really. Going I bet deep to. down you they were seventeen and a half years if you didn't do something, right? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Um. The so, system's fucked up at the same yeah, time. It is. Yeah, it, it is. is. Yeah. I and mean, we're I learning that more and more doing. But that. I mean, their involvement. I mean, we don't. I mean, <laughs> oh, they did. It was all. They had to have known. It had to have been knowingly. I mean. I'm a I'm a smart they guy. Were I'd be asking they were pretty a lot much of following I'd be asking anyways. a lot of questions. Like, yeah, right. the hell's taking him so long? Like, why are we stopping at the gas station? <laughs> and change clothes. I gotta take a pee. What is that <laughs> bloody crowbar? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> why did you change your clothes? Where's your clothes? So in January 2013, an appellate court dismisses attempts by um, Rod Farrell and Scott Anderson to get a new sentencing hearing. However, in December 2018, what did I do? Oh, I thought I did something. I hear my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Dog hair. <laughs> so, where was I? Oh, in December um, 2018, Scott Anderson was resentenced by Don Briggs to 40 years in prison. Anderson was given credit for the 22 years he had already served. Ruth Windor's relatives attended Anderson's resentencing hearing and did not oppose his early release. They didn't oppose it? No. Who in the hell's Ruth? Ruth. Yeah, it says Ruth Windorf's relatives. Was that not Naomi's like middle name? Yes, it is. Okay. Perfect. It's, her name is Naomi See, I Ruth when they do Queen. That. Yeah. It's like stick yeah. with one name, people. It took me a second to remember that. I was like, Ruth? (laughs) Shit. At the end of the day, Teresa gets confused. Um, (laughs) So, yeah. Um, I don't have the date that this happened. This uh, was posted on November 20th, 2019. So, uh, supposedly, um, Rod Farrell apologized. I think it was in 2011. That he apologized to the family? That... Uh, he got reduced. No, yeah. Um, that uh, the Scots kid or whatever. No, that was uh, two thousand and eighteen. Eighteen okay. and eighteen. No, in two thousand nineteen, oh, yeah. Rod Farrell um apologized, saying to the family, saying, "I know nothing I say or do can bring them back. I hope you know just how truly sorry I am." Um, and he was it was said that he was choking back tears as he was saying that um, he wants out <laughs> I'm yeah. sure you I'm sure you are gonna be apologetic it's not funny anymore is it he said he was a child that turned into a monster when he bludgeoned them to death in their home in 1996 um, I get yeah. when you're like raised up in that shit it seems normal to act like that and stuff I mean I I can relate to that and the, not the vampire shit obviously but I can relate to it and I just uh, it's it's difficult well and I think too um, because I believe that he was turned down to have a um, resentenced if I, I yes but from what I understood the U.S. Supreme Court declared life without parole unconstitutional for juveniles. And just last year, uh, the state Supreme Court ruled all juvenile killers with automatic life sentences must be resentenced. Or retried? Or is it just resentenced? Resentenced. Okay. Um, 
you know, and supposedly he's married and has a house, well, waiting on him. Right. Um, he even has a cat and a dog waiting, which scares the holy crap out of me. Oh, I, I yeah. think he should. I think he should do life in prison for what he did to the damn dogs. Yeah. Just keep yeah. him in there for that. <laughs> he did say he didn't. He didn't admit to that though. No, he never did admit to that. But he, 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 would, was, he admitted to brutally murdering two people, but couldn't admit to the dogs. Well, that, he, that was he also like, admitted uh, to the cat though too. Right. Right. He yeah. said, I just don't know why I did it. So that's kind of uh, weird, but he I guess. Didn't, yeah, he didn't admit to the You would think things, he would have, mm-hmm. though. But then maybe did somebody else do it? Right. To make it look like that it was the vampire kids? Right. I um, mean, you know, you don't yeah. know. It is the Bible yeah. Belt. We've had a story about that before already. I yeah. mean, I mean, yeah. I don't, I mean, just questions, you know. Yeah. I Shit honestly. To think about. I watched the interview. Um, you know, there. If if you're interested in this case, I mean, there's tons of stuff on the internet that I found. Oh yeah. And there's a few good documentaries on YouTube, so you can go and kind of look for yourself. And if you find something different, you know, or you find more information than we gave here, we would love to see it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, post a link in the comments. Definitely. Drop a you comment. <clears throat> yeah. And- we got another sick one coming next week, so. Yep. It's deranged. Yeah. It's always deranged. Yeah, th- like I said, this one, uh, I mean, it was brutal. What he did, and I, I don't know. You know, I guess I, my mind just don't work like that, so I, you know. Yeah. I, if it's not planned, then it's somebody that just snapped. Yeah. But I honestly think that he was going there. With that plan. With yeah. that plan. And, you know, to be able to do something, <laughs> to be <laughs> able to do something like that to somebody that's sleeping, you know. Defenseless. Yeah. yeah. So. All right, guys. Well, thanks for listening. And we will be back next week with more deranged. More things. deranged sick shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Have a good week. Bye. You've been listening to the Deranged Nation podcast. Join us every Wednesday night for a new episode as we bring you true crime, unsolved mysteries, and other deranged stories. This episode was sponsored by Braps MX and ATV Pro Shop. Visit them at brapsmx.pro. Also, visit our host, TeresaGableman.com, New York Times bestselling paranormal romance author of the Protector series, available on Amazon.com. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. YouTube.